All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Fox with Central Data. Thank you for joining us today. Excited to welcome Focus, a good partner to Central Data. They're going to be walking through an intro to Focus with a little demo and discussion around the platform. With that, I'll pass it over to Alexa, Sonia, and Lauren, and we'll get going. Thank you so much, Mark, um, and thank you to Team Central Data for setting up this presentation for your customers. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit more about Focus, um, who we are, what we do, and how we've been helping a lot of your customers have a great experience with data. So um, for anyone that's not familiar with Focus, we do have a great partnership with Central Data. Um, and offer their customers a platform for their business analytics, financial reporting, budgeting, and rebates needs. So um, really excited to walk you all through a little bit more about us, um, as well as show you in a look inside the tools today. So I am Alexa West. I've been with Focus for about two years. I'm an account executive on the Infor team. Um, just a little bit of background, we've actually dedicated an entire team here at Focus to the Infor environment. Um, what we've seen is that we're able to be really impactful for the Infor customer and quickly becoming the tool of choice in this ecosystem for a number of reasons that you'll be able to see here today. Um, a quick agenda of what we're going to cover on today's webinar. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about focus and who we are and what we do, um, tell you a little bit more about the different tools that we do offer, um, and then I'll walk you through a high level demonstration of our analytics platform, as well as touch on our financial statements platform as well. Um, and then I'll go ahead and close out the, the meeting today with a few customer success metrics and a portion for some uh, Q&A as well. So Focus Software, we're actually not a startup company. We were founded around 22, 23 years ago, um, and we're actually a global company as well. So we have our roots in Australia, um, some business in the UK, and then the US. Uh, over 3,000 customers globally, 150 of those being in four customers. Um, and we really do pride ourselves on our motto, which is make feel, people feel good about their data. And we're really proud of our 97% customer retention rate. Um, we want our customers to use the tools every day and have, love their data and have a good experience with their data. Um, we were built for the end user. So no need to have a technical background to be able to run and use the focus tools. Um, excited to show you today how you can drill from a high level on a dashboard and down to that transaction level um, just by following your train of thought and letting your data kind of tell you that story. So um, a lot of companies pride themselves on their ease of use uh, with Focus. It, it really is just an easy point and click analytics tool for our customers. Um, and then lastly, we have a really great integration um, with the team here at Central Data really easy to get customers up and running on the platform and we give you an out-of-the-box solution from which you can have a great jumping off point um, to customize and really make your environment your own so um so focus hat is an, a business platform for your the entirety of your business so we started with our analytics layer for sales and operation data um, and we really listened to our customers. So when they were looking for that same uh, kind of tool for their financial statements, we came out with our financial statements platform, really easy to go ahead and customize and save different versions of your financial statements to update automatically with your data. And then from there, we decided to create the collaborative budgeting and forecasting tool. So that budgeting tool builds off of your financial statements platform. Um, it allows you to work off of a single version, um, do driver-based budgeting, what-if scenarios, and then easily forecast as well. And then last but not least, we have our rebates management tool. Really easy to use this tool that's building off of that sales analytics um, database and apply those different rules and tiers and automatically manage your supplier and vendor rebates. Um, and then not pictured on here, we have a CRM tool as well. Um, really easy to add detail about what that customer interaction was like. So as you're going through your data, seeing what's up, what's down, seeing those trends, 
you can actually get to the reason why. So how many calls did we make to that customer and whatnot? Um, and today we're just gonna be taking a tour through the analytics and the financial statements. Um, if anyone wants to have a follow-up meeting and dive a little bit deeper into financial statements, budgeting, forecasting, or rebates, we can absolutely set that up as well. So Focus has three different layers. So we're, we're not just a dashboarding tool. Yes, we have that wonderful visualization layer. We make it really easy to look at your data and get a high-level overview of how you're trending up, down, um, at a glance, but what lives behind that is our analysis layer. So being able to get really granular with your data, we're pulling in that invoice level detail um, into the analytics tool, or we're pulling in that GL level detail into the financial tool. So being able to point and click and do all that analysis underneath is really powerful. And then we also have that third layer underneath that, which is our database designer layer. This allows you to kind of customize the different dimensions, measures, and properties that you're seeing in your environment and customize what we're pulling from your ERP and then also bringing in other databases as well. And then Focus looks like or works like a, a Rubik's Cube. I like to think of this in two different ways. One being that we're bringing in all of those transaction level details, not summary data. So you're able to point and click and change the way you're looking at your data, follow your train of thought without any predefined paths, um, without breaking the tool. And I guess another way to think about this is each side of that colored Rubik's cube is a different database. You're able to look at your different databases side by side and kind of get the full picture of your business. And by looking at maybe, um, I wanna look at my open sales orders compared to my stock on hand to compare to what's forecasted for the next three months. So being able to bring in those different um, databases and streams to look at. Businesses generate a lot of data. So whether we're pulling in your Infor data, maybe you have data in your CRM that you wanna bring into the tool. Um, maybe you had um, some payroll data you wanna bring in or you had an acquisition and you wanna bring them onto the focus platform versus doing a, a migration of, of their ERP, all these things are possible because we are data agnostic. So being able to have one powerful tool to have a single source of truth for your data in one login. And then it's an uncertain world we live in today and being able to use your data to make important and strategic decisions is really critical for an organization. We have uh, logistics challenges, labor shortages, sales fluctuations. Um, Focus is powerful analytics, helps a lot of our customers get the information that they need in order to make important decisions very quickly. And on that very positive note, I'm going to go ahead and um, do a quick demonstration for you. All right, and if anyone's off mute, can I just get a go ahead that you're seeing my focus screen here? We can see it. Perfect, okay, thank you. Um, so here we are, we're at the home page of Focus. And then out of the box with our tools, you're going to get some alerts, databases, dashboards, and favorites. Um, one thing that's really important about Focus is we wanna give you that starting point from which to customize and build out your environment, kind of adopting that crawl, walk, run method with our customers. So we give you a really good starting point out of the box um, to go ahead and build upon. So um, alerts, these are going to be areas of the business you want alerting you when they reach a certain threshold. So being able to go into that report and set parameters for when you want those alerts to send off to you. So I wanna be alerted when my current month profit hits a specific amount, or I wanna see those customers that are declining with declining sales over the last four months. That's something that's important to me. So um, being able to go in and set these parameters and be proactive with different areas of your business. And databases, so this is 
truly the core of the tool. This is where we're pulling that information from in for or whatever databases you're consolidating within the focus platform to be able to easily do all of that point and click drill down analytics, building of reports, et cetera. So um, databases that you can expect to see are financial statements. We have AR and AP in here, um, sales, and then a purchasing sales and stock database as well. We have dashboards and these are self-explanatory, but a collection of charts and graphs put into one location. Really great place to start your day and get a high level overview of your business. You can create and customize as many of these dashboards as you'd like and tailor them for the audience that you're going to roll them out to. Um, so we have, say, a customer scorecard. We have a stock optimization. We have a sales dashboard. Um, lots of different things you could do here. And then lastly on this page, we have some favorites. Favorites are our saved reports. I wanna make the differentiation that these are not a canned report because you can continue asking them questions. So maybe on this report, customers with increasing sales and decreasing margin, that's great, but I wanna see who my sales reps are associated with that customer, or I wanna see what those customers are buying. You can continue asking these reports questions and really get to the bottom of, of what, is, what you're getting the value out of that report. And then lastly on here, we did have some budgets and forecasts that we brought in. Um, I'm not going to cover this one today, but we can um, take that offline and set a date to review the budgeting tool as well. Um, so I'm going to start on my sales dashboard. I think it's important to note that a dashboard like this you can create within 30 to 45 minutes. It really is easy to uh, drag and drop, add different um, different reports, different visualizations, and I can kind of show you how that would look like as well. Um, but this is a sales dashboard, so some things that I might expect to see are, you know, where am I at for the month? Here's my current month sales, profit, and margin. Um, you can go ahead and set these parameters to do red, green, yellow. Um, we have some filterable items as well. So I want to see my reports on this dashboard by rep, by customer, by customer type, product class, or maybe even by supplier or vendor. And then we also have a heat map as well as where that product's going. And a section here that I created is a performance monitor. So here's our average customer their average value per invoice, margin, and purchases by product class. And then as I'm making my selections on this dashboard, we can see how we're comparing to that average as well. And then I also created a section called PKPIs. So maybe this is something that I want my sales reps to go in and be proactive with. So different cross-selling opportunities. Where are we leaving money on the table? So Product A and product B are meant to be sold together. I want to target those customers that are purchasing one and not the other because it's much easier to you know, increase that sale versus getting a new customer. Um, declining customers. Historically, it might be a little bit easier to go ahead and pull a report of your lost customers, but it's a little bit harder to see that trend. So using focus to be able to see, I have you know, 40 declining customers that over the last four months have been purchasing less and less per month. Um, different dead stock items to push. So maybe I want my sales reps to go in here, locate these dead stock items and push them at a discount so we can make sure that we're stocking um, our inventory with, with products that are turning quickly and that are profitable. Maybe I want to go ahead and look at my different declining product classes and see how I can improve. And then also I have some AR aging on here as well. So really um, being able to add to a dashboard different databases. We see sales, we see inventory, and we've also brought in some AR. So as I'm making my selections and, and looking into my different customers, if I see that they have some, um, maybe an invoice that's over 60 days overdue, I can loop that into my conversation with my customer and really add value with that interaction because we all have busy lives. Um, I'm gonna go up here to the top and kind of click through this dashboard, show you how you can drill down from the dashboarding level. 
Um, maybe I'm having a conversation with my rep, Judy Kelly. What I'm gonna do is focus in on her and the entire dashboard will update to reflect Judy Kelly's business. So here she is for the month. Um, here are her different customers, customer types, product classes, and supplier vendors. But maybe I want to look at, she's not doing that great within the distribution customer type. Let's focus in on that. Now we can see Judy Kelly's updating. So here are her monthly monthly sales, profit and margin. Here are those customers that she's working with. Maybe I just want to focus in on one specific customer. Now, if I go down and I want to see how that customer is performing to the average, you know, they're doing really great on their value per invoice. Um, margin is high, but they're only purchasing four out of six product classes. Maybe that's by design. Um, or maybe that's an area that we can improve this already high performing customer. Looks like they also have a cross selling opportunity out there. So when Judy Kelly is making that call to this customer, she can mention that as well. Um, also on this dashboard, you can see all the different selections that you're making. So as you're drilling deeper and deeper, you're never gonna lose track of where you are. And if you wanna deselect, we can hit X or we can just go ahead and reset the entire dashboard as well. So what's really wonderful about this dashboard is all of that detail that you can get really quickly, but if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, you have the option to hit this analyze arrow on any one of these different widgets. And what that's going to do is take you one level closer to the transaction level detail and into the analysis layer, which we call the grid. Um, and just to give you a quick lay of the land of what you're looking at here, um, we're, we have all these different dimensions that we're pulling out from your data, and then we have all these different filters to apply it. So I'm looking at my customers, I'm looking at the local value, and I'm looking at our current month. And where we are for our current month local value, we're at 1.9. Maybe I want to see that by sales rep. So here's that 1.9 by my different sales reps or maybe I wanna see by product subclass. Here's that 1.9 broken out by my product subclass. Um, we can also go ahead and say, I don't wanna see my current month. I wanna see the last three months, or I wanna see rolling 12 months. We can also go ahead and add a custom time period really easily. Maybe I wanna see 2022 to 2023. Um, we can also go all the way down to the day as well. Very easy to add those custom time periods and, and save them. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and save them so you never have to create those custom time periods again. Let's go ahead and say uh, we're in total mode, but maybe I wanna see this rolling 12 months. I wanna see it compared to the last rolling 12 months. I just clicked on variance mode and now what I can do is see our current, our previous, and that variance in between in the dollar amount and also the percentage. I can also say, I wanna see that rolling 12 broken out into period mode. So I wanna see my customers total local value broken out by the period that I've selected. So here's my rolling 12 months. We can also, and I'm gonna clean this up and go to total mode, bring in some different measures. So I maybe wanna see my profit and margin when I'm looking at my customers. How are they performing there? Or maybe I wanna to go to my product subclass and I want to see my quantity and my local value. Because we're pulling in that transaction level detail, um, within focus, we've already built those, or in a matter of words, we've already built those queries out for you. So it's really easy and fast to point and click and change the perspective of how you're looking at your data. Um, so for example, if I wanted to just see my downlines, I could focus in on them and then go back up to products. And now I'm seeing all of my products within that downlines category for the local value and quantity. So really easy, just made um, 
this report with a few clicks. I didn't have any report in mind, but you can really follow your train of thought as you're moving through your data. So I'm going to run through a quick example of um, something I showed you on that dashboard that I created is a, a great way to make the most out of your customers right now is a cross-selling opportunity. So um, if I go down to my product subclass, and I'm just going to go into total mode to clean this up for us, um, I know that product A and product B that might be sold together are fluorescents and ballasts, since we're in my lights and illumination demo environment. What I can do is a really easy pivot table um, with this matrix button. So I selected those two, I'm going to hit matrix, and we turn these rows into columns that are going to follow us throughout our data. So if I go back up to customer, now I can see all my customers that have purchased fluorescence and that have purchased ballasts. We can already see some zeros here, but I wanna find all of the folks that are buying fluorescence but not buying ballast. So I'm gonna hit ballast equals zero. And that number in the corner went from about 12, 1200 down to 840. So here are all those people buying fluorescence and ballasts. And maybe I wanna go ahead and add this to a dashboard. So when my um, reps are focusing in on their business, they can see which opportunities are tied to their name. So what I could do for that, a um, few different ways are exporting features with uh, focus, but we have um, print, PDF, Excel, email, all the old fashioned ways, or we can go ahead and add it to a dashboard. So if I hit add to a dashboard, I want to bring this onto my sales dashboard. I'm going to bring it onto my key KPIs and we're gonna call it cross-selling opportunities. We can hit save and open. And then with a few clicks, it was really just that easy to go ahead and bring that new report onto my dashboard. And then from here, I can just dive right back into that report as well with my analyze arrow. Perfect. Something else I wanted to show today is how you'd be able to pull different data sets and look at them together within the tool. So we have a mode called stream mode. And what stream mode is going to allow you to do is compare two different streams of data. Right now we're looking at our sales compared to our budget stream. We could also go ahead and say, I wanna look at my stock on hand and I want to compare that to my open orders. So really easily, I can say, here are all of my open orders. And oh no, well, this is demo data, but it looks like we don't have any stock on hand for some of these open orders. We need to fulfill that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reset here. But I think that is a good opportunity to jump over into, say, a stock optimization dashboard. So a stock optimization dashboard is gonna be really helpful um, when you're trying to be strategic with your spend. So being able to see, you know, here's our distribution, here's our product classes in our top 10. Here's the value we have on hand and here's our dead stock value really quickly and easily, red, green, yellow. I also really love that we've created a month's cover. So being able to see those um, product categories, the stock on hand, and what we're averaging per month. So that way we can calculate within the tool how many months do we have coverage for. We can also do a quick um, reorder. So what I have on hand, you can compare that to what's on back order, what's available, again, what you're averaging per month and what your suggested order could be. Also looking at different product cost changes. So um, where are our products increasing? Where are they decreasing? Very easy to get a snapshot of all of these different reports in one localized dashboard really quickly and easily. I also wanted to give you a look at a customer scorecard. Um, a lot of our customers are using this to have better interactions with their customers. So, really quickly and easily they can see 
20 to 30 different reports exactly where their customer is at, whether they're you know, trending up, trending down. Um, maybe I want to uh, select the feature coding. We can focus in on this specific customer. Um, and I think it's also important to note here that we are a web-based application. So whether you're, you're sitting at your desk and you're calling on this customer or whether you're out in the field and you have a cell phone or tablet, you can pull up this customer scorecard to have that high level conversation with that customer. So um, here we are compared to that, um, that performance monitor that I showed you on my dashboard. Where are we at this year versus last? visually and really easily. Um, here's our different class shares, variance by period, lots of different detail you can add and customize to whatever you'd like to see within this customer scorecard as well. And with that, I was going to hop over into financial statements. Um, so our financial statements here, it looks and feels really similar to the environment that we were just in. We did that on purpose. We want you to move seamlessly throughout the tools. Um, so what this tool is doing is it's taking that GL level detail, all those journal postings, as well as your chart of accounts, mapping it within the focus and allowing you to have that same ease of customization and building up those reports. So um, let's say I am, or um, out of the box, with the focus financial statements, you get a few. Um, you get your profit and loss statement, your balance sheet, your cash flow, and your trial balance. So all of those common reports. You can see we've done a lot of different examples here. So once you run a report, you're able to save it here for easy access. So you never have to go back in and customize it and redo that work. Once you build it, you can save that version and it will update with your data as well. So we're looking at our P&L right now. We have our current and our previous brought in. We can also bring in a budget if we so please. So we can see our current or previous also compared to that three-part budget that we have. Um, we can clean those columns up and say, I just want to see my previous and my current. And what we could do is also create a financial dashboard. Really easy graphing feature on this um, on this module as well. We can see it bullet, we can see a value card, um, and then quickly just go ahead and add that to a dashboard. Also really easy to go ahead and customize the period that we're looking at. So um, if I wanted my P&L to be for the month, for the financial year to date, you can create custom time periods for your different quarters. Um, really, really flexible tool here. But if I wanted to go ahead and say, I have all of my different branches and I want to give my uh, branch managers just their data, I just want them to see the, their P&L, I could go into branch. I can select the branch that I'm wanting to create that P&L for. So maybe I want to do branch number five. I can go back up to my financial statement summary. And it's going to build me that branch PL that I can very easily go ahead and um, save as a favorite. So if you wanted to subscribe and say, I want that branch manager to get this report every Monday morning at 8 a.m., um, you can do that with the favorites. You can also add it to maybe they have a dashboard where they're looking at their, their sales along with their um, uh, a snapshot of their PL as well. You can add that all to a dashboard. Um, you can also go down here and I'm going to click out of that selection. If I wanted to make a comparison across, you know, here's my total PL and here's my performance broken out by branch, we can use that same matrix feature that we used before, but within the financial tool. So I just made those rows into columns. And if I go back up to my financial statement summary, it's going to build me that profit and loss statement where I can see my total as the business and then broken out by each branch. Really quickly and easily being able to 
look at this report and analyze and drill down into this as well. So um, maybe I'm analyzing my operating expenses. I could drop this down and we have you know, our different categories here. Let's say I want to make it a little bit more simple for analysis purposes, and I want to organize it by department. I can drag and drop this department into levels. Oops, thinking. And what this is going to do is it's subcategorizing my data. So when I drop back down my operating expenses, it's gone ahead and categorized that for me. So just cleaning up my view a little bit, I want to look at some of my marketing expenses, um, say for a specific branch. So I'm looking at my marketing expenses, advertising for branch three. If that number looks any anything off to me, what I can do at any point is left click and go all the way down to that transaction level to see those individual journal postings and see what's making up that number. Perfect. And just like the other tool, um, same export features that we have here, you can add it to a favorite, create an alert as a dashboard, et cetera, or visualize and add to um, a dashboard. So go ahead and reset. I'll hop on over, let's see, back to my PowerPoint for you. All right, are we back on my screen here? Yes, we are. Perfect. All right, so um, just a few customer success metrics. Um, we really pride ourselves on delivering that ROI with people that invest in our tools. So being able to see a 40% increase in new opportunities, your reporting speed. One thing that we do really well for our customers is we save them a ton of time, um, decrease in administration costs, reduction in month end close time, um, really working with our customers, making sure that they're happy and getting a lot of value out of these tools. Um, and with that, I wanted to open up to some questions. I covered a lot today, but I'm sure that there's still some questions out there. So um, feel free to drop them in the chat or um, I'm not sure if we can go off mute and ask questions as 